Hello and welcome back to the workshop. Now, we may have finished the great guitar build up, but that doesn't mean we have to end there. I enjoyed doing that so much. We're gonna get right into another build. I'm gonna go ahead and build a five string bass. As you can see, I've got this template I've made up. Now it's only the scale length. So, what's my plan? I plan to do a neck through. I plan to do it with walnut and maple and I plan to do a laminated neck. The neck itself is going to be seven piece. So it's gonna be a laminated with walnut and maple. And then once I get that main piece set up, I'm gonna put the wings on there. I haven't finalized the body design yet. I want to use the similar design to my guitars, the ergonomic design, but I know that being that this is a bass and it's a little larger, I'm gonna to have to adjust the dimensions of that a little bit. So. For me, the best way to do that is to get started and to get the main part put together so that I can then play with the shape of the body. But it got me to thinking, doing a laminated neck like this, why can't I cut the channel for the truss rod before I glue all this together? So I think I'm gonna do that to give myself that basic profile and to help with having my router run across that channel. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, it's the next day. I've stripped down a bunch of the wood, and as you can see, I've already started laminating it. Now I can already see in the comments, there's gonna be a lot of people telling me that that's not how it's done. Well, this was all an experiment. Realistically, I just wanted to see if it was possible to pre-slot the truss rod pocket. And so far, I like the results. I did put a little shim in here just to keep everything straight and I do know that I'm going to have to widen that pocket slightly for the truss rod, but the pocket is already in there, and as I've been laminating these pieces one by one, I've been making sure that it is as straight as possible. Now I know that there is going to be a slight hump here, but I've given myself plenty of room to shave down, and realistically it is not a significant amount. So I know that my ending dimensions, once the fretboard is on, is going to be about 22 at the nut and about 25 at the 12th fret, giving me a nice taper. So I've given myself several millimeters of space to cut off in the end once I'm done. As you can see, I've already started getting the main profile in here. So I've got a three degree angle for my headstock here, just a slight bend. So I get the strings at the right height so that they don't drift off that nut once I get it on there. So my fretboard is going to be about six millimeters after all is said and done. I've only got two more strips to glue onto this, and these ones are the largest ones, so I've got to clean up the sides here. As you can see, I still got some burn marks from my saw. But this is going to give me that dead flat spacing here. Because these are wider boards, they don't cup as much once you've cut them. So once I can maneuver these other pieces into this shape, that's going to give me where I need to plane down for the fretboard to go. So I'm going to get these assembled and we'll get to planing. And with a handful of glue-ups and a couple quick passes from my hand plane, I've got this thing dead flat. Now, was this ultimately easier? Uh, I'd say a little bit. Really time was the only thing, and as far as time goes, all I was really doing is waiting for the glue-ups. As long as I made sure that these were dead straight when I was gluing it up, I didn't really have to do much cleanup to make sure that that was already straight. And this truss pocket is dead center and super tight, so all I have to do is clean that up a little bit and I think that this will pop right in there. I could force it in, but it's still pretty tight at this point, so I'd rather just clean up the edges a little bit before I jam the truss rod in there. I've also got the back of my headstock flattened so that I can plane the top part of it down, and then that way I can cut out the headstock shape. Now then, we've gotten this far, it's planed down, the back of my headstock is all planed, and as you can see, I've extended it 
to fit my current headstock shape. And I went ahead and I got this truss pocket real, real tight. Which is good because that means the truss rod won't go anywhere and it'll give me even tension across the fretboard. So what I want to tackle next is I want to tackle the headstock. Now, my headstock is not the final depth. A traditional headstock is about a half an inch or a little more. So I'm going to bring this to my drill press. Yes, my drill press. I have this fancy piece here which is the safety plane. This is a tool that Stu Mac offers. I can put a link in the description below if you're interested in it. But what this is gonna do is it's gonna go into my drill press and it's got these three blades that's gonna get it down to thickness for me. Now with that being said, as with any power tool, it's always good to be cautious and go slow. Uh, that's why I prefer handwork a lot of the time is because I have much more control over it. So I'm not gonna take it down to the final depth. I'm gonna get it close within a couple millimeters so that way I can finish off by hand and make sure it's exactly where I want it to be. Now with this, I'm gonna take it very slow. I'm gonna take short passes and by the end of it, I'm gonna to get to about five eighths as a total thickness so that I can clean it up by hand the rest of the way. And I'm only gonna go to about here so that I can clean up with a file for this truss rod access. With that, you see we're just about there, so I think I got one more good pass and then I am all set to do this by hand. She's a bit rough, but we got her just over 0.6 inches, which is real close to where I want to be. So I'm going to stop here with the safety planer and I'm going to go ahead and clean this up by hand. There's still a little bit here that's rough, but I'm happy that I'm right about where I want to be. So now with that safety planer, we've got it pretty dang flat, which is great. This obviously leaves some distasteful spots. So I'm just gonna go through between my Shinto rasp and a small hand plane, just to flatten everything out and get it nice, straight, and true. And then I'm gonna cut out the headstock shape. That'll get us to a nice stopping point today. got it this far I'm gonna go ahead and drill out my tuning keyholes before I do too much of the sanding on the headstock here but we've got it pretty much down to thickness to where I want it to be it's down low enough I've got that curved profile that'll lead into the fretboard now I just got to decide what I want to do with the body all right I'm happy to say that all that math worked out and these things are super snug next to each other which is a great sign going forward with that I think we're gonna call it at this one I'm gonna figure out what I want to do with the body I'm thinking of doing something interesting but 
if any of you have any recommendations of what you'd like to see done, uh, we could do the design, we could do scrap pieces, we could do... We could do Argyle, Chevron, you name it. Still haven't quite decided yet. Let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.